Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2021 Virtual Grand Canyon Star Party. I'm Ranger Raider Lane, National Park Service Coordinator for the event. And for 31 years running, Grand Canyon has been celebrating our pristine night skies through the annual Grand Canyon Star Party. Now, ordinarily, we invite hundreds of astronomers and thousands upon thousands of visitors to the park to enjoy eight nights of some of the darkest night skies in the United States. Each evening is kicked off with a special guest speaker in our theater, followed by telescope viewing, constellation tours, night sky photography uh, workshops, and, uh, and much, much more. Now, next year's Grand Canyon Star Party uh, will hopefully be on site, and that's going to be June 18th through the 25th, 2022. So mark your calendars and cross your fingers that we'll be able to celebrate that uh, on site. Uh, this year, we are again doing a virtual Grand Canyon Star Party, and we're really excited. We have a host of incredible speakers uh, this year. And before we introduce our guest speaker tonight, I just want to thank a few entities uh, for help putting on the event. One, the Grand Canyon Conservancy. Now, they're the park's official nonprofit partner. Uh, the International Dark Sky Association, uh, they're the entity that certified Grand Canyon National Park as an international dark sky park back in 2019. Uh, I'd like to thank the Tucson Amateur Astronomy Association. Uh, they are the group that will be hosting the virtual telescope viewing sessions throughout the week and are also here on site every single year uh, to show visitors the wonders of the night sky on a volunteer basis. And finally, the Society for Cultural Astronomy in the American Southwest, an entity that helped organize many of our special guest speakers for this year. Uh, finally, stay tuned for our virtual telescope viewing sessions premiering right after this talk right here. And with that, I wanna introduce tonight's special guest speaker tonight. Uh, we are honored to have Autumn Giard. Uh, Autumn is a descendant of the Cedar Band of Paiutes from the Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah on her maternal side. She is currently working at Pipe Spring National Monument as an intern. And Autumn is the author of the Pipe Spring National Monument Dark Sky Application and is a student at Southern Utah University, University majoring in anthropology and minoring in psychology. She gained her passion for the dark sky from her cultural connections taught to her by her mother and her grandmother. Uh, Autumn, thanks so much for joining us tonight and take it away. Hi guys, thanks for joining us. So let's go ahead and get into this presentation. Um, I hope you guys really like what I put together tonight. Uh, it's gonna be some pretty great information, new information that was newly rediscovered within the Southern Paiute Nation. Um, so as Ranger Raider mentioned, my name's Autumn. I'm a descendant of the Cedar Band of Paiutes from the Paiute Indian Tribe of Utah. And this astronomy project that we've been working on at Pipe Spring to incorporate the Southern Paiute views um, has been about two years in the making. So this is just some of the research that we gathered and like I mentioned, researched once again. So just a little bit about me. Um, as Raider mentioned, I'm a current anthropology major, psychology minor at Southern Utah University. So I do work as a seasonal interpretive ranger at Pipe Spring National Monument. And this season, I will be Pipe Spring's very first dark sky ranger. Um, so we're going to get a lot of more dark sky programs in the works this year for 2021. Um, and I did, as Raider mentioned, gain passion for the sky through my cultural teachings from my mother and grandmother. So before I get into the information about the dark sky, I want to do a little, little bit of a disclaimer. So not all information of the night I will be shared tonight. Some traditional knowledge must be kept for only the Southern Paiute Nation. This is to help in the protection and preservation of cultural knowledge. Um, and another mention is if you work in areas where you speak about Southern Paiute star stories, please do not tell them out of the winter season. And even then try to connect to the Paiute people. Our knowledge is best shared for those a part of our own culture. And I also might not be able to answer all questions since some information is private and because we are out of the winter season. So let's get into it. Native people as astronomers. So since the beginning of Native people's existence upon North America, 
we have been scientists. So this includes astronomy work, botany work, hydrology, architecture, and many other fields. It was through our traditional knowledge and teachings that we achieved the ability to be scientists before your Americans arrived to the continent. Our scientific views are critical for teaching our children that we do have a place in fields related to science. So interpretation of the solar system from a Native American mindset. And this is something that I think is really important to American people is that when we are getting our viewpoint of things such as this, incorporate two parts of us. And this is our traditional cultural knowledge along with the new Americanized version of what science is. And so the ability to do this um, creates opportunities, this or interpretive opportunities to be able to teach people outside of our cultures. So, like I mentioned, we're able to view and translate the sky to two different mindsets. We do need knowledge of traditional stories in order to translate this information. The importance of cultural connection to all of creations of our universe and understanding that you are a part of a whole circle that continues to move in energy. Most importantly, establishing a connection to our ancestors, contemporary native people. I think this was the driving force with this project for Southern Paiute astronomy is really, really wanted to solidify that connection to our ancestors and what they saw in the sky when they looked up. So how did this research begin? Um, it began with a revitalization of Southern Paiute astronomy through a research program um, by Pipes National Monument, but it was also in cooperation with the Zion Forever Project and the Kaibab Band of Paiute Indians. If it was not for three entities, we would not be able to give this information, would not have had the funding to gather it and complete research. So thank you to them. The main idea was to collect star information that is important to the preservation of cultural knowledge for current and future generations of the Southern Paiute Nation. It was, the collected information could help create a Southern Paiute star chart or a new Wu solar system as seen through our ancestors' eyes. So here in the photo, you see myself, and you see my dark sky intern um, in 2019. She is a Kaibab Paiute tribal member. Her name is Mary Hill, and she was also a big, big help. And it was my pleasure working with her and just seeing her passion grow every day for our dark sky. So the mythology of the research collected in the past. So 1950s was collected in the manner of ethnography work. Lots of oral history interviews, oral interviews, and engagement and tangible experiences to translate into cultural understanding. So this work was often done by anthropologists and archaeologists, but there posed an issue when we were looking at this information. And the problem was, is that some of the past work was translated from a Euro-American mindset and at times shifted to fit the views of American society. So you have traditional star stories that would get recorded, but they would be changed and traditional wording would be turned around, um, like I said, to understand your American mindsets. So kind of muddling through that and getting to the main point was another hurdle that we faced. Um, but it was interesting to see how two cultures were interacting at such an early age. So literature that was used for reference um, is this book here. This is called The Why the North Star Stands Still, and it is written by William Palmer. And it serves as one of the only published books with a Southern Paiute star story. So contributions to this book come from my great grandmother, Clara Zuniga, and Uncle Isaac Hunkup. So I guess it's always been in my genes to look up at the sky and translate what I see. Um, but other literature used for reference was the Anthropology of the Numa, which is a manuscript of Wesley Powell's interacting with the native Colorado plateau. You also have the field notes from anthropologist Isabel Kelly. 
And Isabel Kelly was really great in how she recorded Southern Paiute star information. Um, and she mainly worked with the Moapa Band of Paiutes and the Las Vegas Band of Paiutes. So it was also interesting as we were going through research because we were able to see each southern band had their own view of the dark sky and sometimes constellations shifted in how they saw them. Why is the cultural connection of the to the southern Paiute? Well, like many cultures across the globe, the idea of being connected to something larger on a universal level is a part of being culturally aware of who we are as Southern Paiute people. The interpretation of the sky encourages the development of songs, dances, ceremonies, and life skills, such as agriculture. The sky also serves a purpose for one of the most sacred parts of our life cycle as Paiute people. It is the map to our path to the spirit world when we pass away. So these views can be crucial connection to the history of Coyote and his children, as well as the path of the spirit world or the Milky Way and Pleiades. So how does the night sky influence the life of the Southern Paiutes? Um, it does this by circle dance songs and dances. Southern Paiute people are well known for our circle dance skills and our circle dance song skills. So during certain full moons or eclipses, this would be a traditional time to hold circle dance ceremonies. Um, and agricultural planting methods would be related to the first full moon in June. This signifies the, of the monsoon season. Related to daily life, such as rising in the morning to greet the morning star or Venus and the sun. Ceremonies such as the sun dance and the ceremony also have relation to Venus and signifies the start of these ceremonies. So the Hermione line and the Milky Way hold connections to the path to the spirit world. So these are very, very sacred connections here with the horizon line and the Milky Way. And I want to mention that it is when the sun is setting and you're looking out on the horizon and you see when the sun meets the horizon, you have that nice dark red line. That is the opening to the spirit world. And the stars are home for some of the influential spirits of the Southern Paiute world. So let's jump into some constellation information. So constellations in the Paiute universe. Constellations within the Southern Paiute world are related to tr traditional stories that help the development of the perception of the earth from a Southern Paiute's personal perspective. The constellations are also related to winter stories and are traditionally not told out of the winter season. Constellations can be discussed out of the winter season, but the story connected to that constellation must only be told in the winter. So the first constellation that I wanted to talk about is the North Star or Polaris, also known as the Bighorn Sheep to the Southern Paiute people. Polaris is the constellation of Earth Minor and is known in the universe or the Southern Paiute universe as the bighorn sheep who climbed too high and became stuck in the sky. The creator then placed him as the North Star to guide the travelers. So the North Star serves a very important purpose because he creates a connection for the Southern Paiute people between the creator as showing that our creator has connection to his children and he loves them just as much as we love ours here in the physical world. So the next constellation is Orion, the hunter. So Orion is as the hunter, the bow stretched out based to his prey. And first appearance of Orion was also a sign of the start of winter and related to the first winter full moon in November. So once this constellation began to show in the sky, this is when our ancestors knew winter is here. We need to start preparing, start getting those caches even more fulfilled than they was fulfilled in the warmer months. So Taurus, the bull, um, seen as the antelope in the Southern Paiute universe. Thought this one was very interesting. We were doing our research because here you have the ancient Greeks viewing Taurus as a bull or a horned animal. And here, ocean and worlds away, our ancestors saw a horn well. 
So here, the great antelope also holds the constellation, the Pleiades cluster. And this cluster is highly revered constellation in the Paiute solar system. So Pleiades, the seven sister, um, referred to as the rabbit nest or Soni in Southern Paiute means like a safe place or a whole place. Um, this constellation is home Coyote's children. And the coyote is facing the constellation Pleiades. So he is baying and crying because his family is away from him. But it is also home to Coyote's most beautiful daughter, which is the brightest star, Alcyon. She is the helping guide for those that have passed on to reach the spirit world. And the moon. Moon holds a very significant connection to the Southern Paiute world and universe. The moon is connected to women in our cycles. She is wife to the sun, connected to many facets of the Paiute life, songs, dances, ceremonies, and agriculture. And she actually also helps break up the seasons between the Southern Paiute world um, and shows the shifts of how these constellations are changing throughout the year. So I wanted to take some time to show some thanks and appreciation for some of the entities that assisted with us in Pipe Spring National Monument, the opportunity for to grow, your time vacation, the Kaibab Band of Paiute Indians, tribal elders from all bands, the Zion Forever Project, my most biggest thanks to the Southern Paiute Nation, Ranger Ben Pickovit for your guidance on research and understanding of our traditional ways and teaching them to me and my family for all the support they give to me through many endeavors that I take them through in our beautiful outdoors. These are just some of our references and I wanna thank you guys for tuning in um, and I'm here if you have questions. Okay. I am muted, okay. Thank you so much, Autumn. That was awesome talk and uh, so many interesting things that you said there. Uh, first, I, I just think it's wonderful that, uh, you know, Paiute astronomy is, is finally being, you know, uncovered and, uh, and celebrated in this way. Do you have any plans or are there any plans in the works for making some of this stuff more widely known on a on a more official scale, whether it be through websites or books or things like that? Yeah, so the main idea is that we would like to create a Southern Paiute star chart and possibly get it published and start dispersing it throughout the different public land areas within the vicinity of Paiute people. Oh, fantastic, so yeah. Go ahead. More constellations, but I just tried to. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, that that is um, amazing. What a great idea. And uh, I think it was really fascinating what you were saying about the uh, Taurus and, and uh, Orion as well uh, being analog sort of uh, figures, worlds apart from. Uh, the Greek constellations. I think that's just so fascinating how we can, um, how certain constellations, you know, independent of cultures, independent of each other, name them the sort of certain, the same type of entity. And uh, you, you see that a lot, especially with, with Orion. And uh, I just thought that was, that was a really fascinating um, factor that you, you introduced there. Um, finally, yeah. I, I just, uh, I wanted to uh, get your take on uh, the, I wouldn't say, I guess prohibition is sort of a strong word, but the discouraging of telling stories outside of the winter time. Why do you think that has, that principle, that idea has evolved through not only the Paiutes, but various tribes around the Grand Canyon region? Why do you think that principle sort of evolved in that way. So um, are we speaking on like evolution today of how stories are told or well, what is the more, traditional meaning? 
more just like the idea of why why do you think um only the idea of only telling star stories in the winter like mm-hmm. that idea in itself i know there's probably not an answer but i'm i'm wondering if you have a hunch or, or an idea of how maybe you know that evolved because dene and you know hopi and ashivi peoples also have this same idea where to share constellation stories outside of the winter time this appropriate time is sort of a taboo and um and i'm just curious if you have any insight as to why that might have evolved as a concept right so i our traditional reason why we can't tell stories the winter season is because we believe that we will get bit by a rattlesnake so you definitely do not want to get bit by a rattlesnake. So to avoid that situation, we don't tell the story. Um, for evolution in the terms of today, um, and even thinking towards the past. So this would have been challenge for somebody to learn these stories. Uh, oftentimes we have ancestors who were specific set persons within our bands who had this really great talent of telling stories. But how do they teach them? So generally, they would take somebody under their wing and would probably teach them the stories all year long because you're not going to see every constellation every year Mm. throughout the year. And so it would have been done in privacy rather than reciting them out loud publicly in front of everyone else. In the terms of today, of evolution, um, we do have to realize Yes, our traditions and our cultures are very, very important to us as Native people. But because we live in this new world that was created, we have to learn how to bend with it. And so with doing that, um, we teach our children and our family members the stories in the privacy of our own homes and with the other person. So I guess it would say that if anybody was interested in learning the stories, of course, you can always read what is published out there for free education information. Just don't recite them out loud. Just keep it in your own privacy. And I think that that makes it a little bit more special. It makes it a little bit more intimate because it's kind of like, you know, when we save something for a certain time of year, maybe a certain Christmas tradition that we have, we wait all year to engage in that tradition. So I guess it can be looked at like that also. Oh, that's a great insight. And um, I really admire what you do as somebody who is both drawing from and continuing on traditional ways and navigating that all through a contemporary society. It seems like a very difficult task, but a very worthwhile task. Um, So thanks so much for doing everything you do. And thanks so much for this talk. It It was most excellent. And uh, please, everybody, if you're watching, visit Pipe Spring National Monument. It's a, it's a wonderful site north of the Grand Canyon, a great uh, park site to, to, uh, to visit or to add to a visit um, at some of the bigger sites around the Southwest as well. So um, please, everybody, stay tuned for the virtual telescope viewing session that's occurring right after this talk. And... Um, With that, again, Autumn, thanks so much. And we hope uh, to see you on site uh, at uh, a future star party here at Grand Canyon sometime. Yeah, thanks for having me.